Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure video. Today I'm taking a look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Axie Toys who was kind enough to send over an early look at this figure. Uh, and I'm always very thankful when companies are willing to include me in these kind of promotional pushes because my channel is still small. So it makes me feel good when companies are willing to, you know, put their trust in me like that. Um, and this is an early look. There might be a few little tweaks they're going to make before the actual release, which I think is very soon. You can get this figure on 5k toys. I put a link in the description below. Uh, one of the cool things about this release is that there's two versions. You can get the deluxe version with all the stuff, all the accessories, the armor bits, the cape, like all the weapons and everything. Or you can just get a more basic version if you want to save some money and maybe like customize it yourself. You can just get the basic one that's just the body, the head, the hands, and so on. Another cool thing about this one is that it's got Kylab parts. So it's using leather and like real buckles and just kind of gives it that realistic element that I like because usually you have to order the Kylab stuff as separate accessories and sort of, you know, build out and, uh, you know, ac accent your figures with it. Uh, but this is cool to see that included in here. So Kai doing great work as always in a part of this project. Really cool stuff. So check that out if you want to order them. As always, supporting Friends of the Door Claire is the same as supporting the Door Claire. We're one community and really just try to support each other and help uh, help each other grow. Okay, I'm starting this video off a little different than usual. I want to showcase the size because to me that's probably the most striking thing about this figure is the sheer size of it all. This thing is massive. It's wide, it's tall, it's huge. Standing over nine inches tall, this thing is massive. You could probably change the posture a bit and get it to be a little more upright and it would be it would be definitely approach 10 inches. And for comparisons, first up, we have the original dinosaur from Axie Toys on the left, and you can just see, like, that that's a big figure, and this thing makes it look tiny. And then on the right is a standard 1.0 Mythic Legions figure with, who's that? Yes, that is me, custom head sculpt Bill from uh, Duarte Studios. Brian Almeida, huge shout out and thank you, man, for putting that together. It is spectacular. I am, like... So thrilled to have a little action figure of myself now. And then speaking of Kylabs, we've got two Mezco Conans with Kylab parts here. On the left, we have the Conan the Barbarian. On the right, Conan the Conqueror, both with the different Kylab parts that came out right around the same time those figures were released. Next up, we've got the just released Master Wang, which I'm hoping to do a video of that at some point. And that figure is big. And for this one to make that look small is kind of crazy. And then Masterverse on the right. I mean, Masterverse figures are pretty big too. Like they're seven inch figures. So just look at it next to this dinosaur. Next, we got the big guys and the Axe Battler from Storm Collectibles is taller, but it's definitely not bigger. Like it has less bulk. It has less weight. It is a smaller figure technically. And on the right is the Ogre Scale Half Giant. Both are from Mythic Legions. And just kind of breeze through a few more just for size comparisons. Here's Animal Warriors and Cosmic Legions. Here's a couple of the new NECA Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then we got a couple Hasbro figures, Black Series on the left, Marvel Legends on the right. And last but not least, we have NECA Ultimate Elf. And for a look at the figure, it's got this articulated jaw, got this really shiny armor, all of the armor, the cape, everything that's on it is removable. Got some nice like fur piece here and then like a velvet looking kind of cape and it's got a wire on the two sides of the cape. And yeah, so pretty cool looking figure here. You can see it's got, this is I think is called the red version. So it's like primarily red, but it's got purple accents throughout the body. Um, but yeah, the, the, the main sort of color is this reddish and then into the purples. And then there's the, uh, you know, the leather arm guard that's got some cool details stamped into it. And then that is attached to the, pla you know, the plastic molded piece there. And then the belt also has leather going on. So really cool stuff. And the buckles are functioning and I'm going to take everything off later. I think I need to tighten this arm guard up. Um, it's a little loose, but it's got an extra notch on the buckle. So it should fit after I tighten it. Um, and there's a look at the hands and the armor down in the feet. Again, those leather parts and it's got articulated toes. We'll do articulation once I get the thing fully disassembled and stuff. 
and we got some weapons and stuff but yeah very cool looking figure it does have a tail and the tail pegs into the it's a similar thing as the other figure it's just like this weird square peg that comes out of the butt actually i can show you right there so that thing can ratchet into two different positions here for accessories i feel like the main weapon is this thing which has a an attachment and you can hold it like I don't know. You can hold it in a number of different ways. I kind of like it just as a short axe type piece. Um, like this is pretty cool. And the peg itself, you can kind of stick into whichever piece you want. So you can kind of stay in that side or you can have it just stay in this side if you want. But nice little blood accents on there. And then the other weapon is this club painted in roughly the same kind of paint scheme. And this can also function with these pieces so you know you can attach it in different ways and for the helmet um i like it with the spikes on there but the other option and this just kind of shows how brutal this character is there's a triceratops skull that can plug right into here if i can just get it on there we go um so he wears the skull of a triceratops and that's pretty crazy i kind of prefer the spikes on there so you have options but um, yeah, that is one option is to have this. And it's like modular too. Like these pieces come out and you could potentially stick this, you know, anywhere on the figure. If you wanted to put these horns on his shoulders and stuff, like there's a ton of little pieces like these things right here that you can mix and match and customize them however you want. Comes with this medallion. So you can put this around his neck and have it, you know, dangling underneath there. He's got a variety of dangly bits that have hooks and so these can hook on in different places. For example, if you wanted to hook this piece on up here and the cape hooks on as well with the same kind of hook system. But just like a whole bunch of different little pieces that you can mix and match. I like this one. It's got like a bird's skull on there. And of course a bunch of these other little ones that you can peg into all the various ports, all the different holes throughout the figure and different kinds of spikes and horns and things. And it comes with a total of four hands. So there's two gesturing hands. There's like the, the open hand over here and then this pointing hand, and then there's two straight up gripping hands. And like I said, the cape just hooks on there and then you can just remove that cape. And a quick look at the cape itself. Again, it's like a velvety material and it's got wires along each of the edges. The shoulder pauldrons peg into the back with these like separate pegs and they are, you know, almost their own like separate little accessory and those peg right in like this. And the helmet attaches with this rubber band, essentially like this kind of comes under the neck and then you bring it over here and attach it that way. And this was the one thing that they mentioned in the email saying that they're working on a better way to fix this or just to like refine the attachment of the helmet a little bit better. And we'll see if I can do this on camera. It's really tricky to look through a camera lens and do this type of like really fine work, but these um, buckles are functioning buckles. So I need to pull it this way and then bring it out that way. And then let's see if I can get this so you can see it. So I'll pull it up through and then lift this. And then this should come off like that. Yep. And so, so here's a good look at the leather piece with the straps and stuff. And there's a buckle on the back. And this is very much your traditional kind of buckle right there. And that'll bring this piece of the belt off right there. So you could put this on other figures, you know, like these would probably adjust and fit. It's got three different spots for it to, to customize things with. And then next up, the skirt and loincloth piece has a little Velcro right here, and that comes right off very easily. And finally, the leg armor has the same kind of buckle system as the belt. And you just kind of get these off. Pretty simple. Getting them back on is always a little more challenging, but it's fairly straightforward with doing these things. If I can get this here, there we go. And here we have it fully de-armored. And I believe this is what you'll get if you order the basic version. You'll get the figure, the extra hands, and that's pretty much it. For articulation, there's a ton of range up in that head. It can look up and down. There's multiple points of articulation. It can come side to side and you can twist it, of course. It has the articulated jaw, just a ton of great movement up in that head. 
and a huge improvement from the very first figure where it was all one neck piece. And then you have a butterfly joint in the shoulder, so that gives some added range for a bulky figure. It works pretty well. And then you have a hinge at the shoulder, a bicep swivel. You have that single hinged elbow that can come up, you know, a good range for, again, something so huge. It's actually pretty well articulated. We've got that split ball kind of a wrist joint that a lot of imports have. So here's the wingspan on him. And then you have the uh, multiple ball jointed torso. So you have the upper torso that has the, you know, double ball jointed section that can cock side to side and pardon my camera here. This thing's kind of large and hard to get it in the shot. And then you have a ball joint at the waist and you can twist at the waist. He can crunch forward about this far and then you can angle back. There's gonna be a little gappage depending on how you pose it, but a lot of good range up in that torso. And then there's a ball jointed hip with a twist at the upper thigh. And again, good range there. Double jointed knee. I mean, that's kind of wild. You know, there's going to definitely be like joints showing when you get into the crazy poses, but still pretty cool range of motion there. Excellent range and the hinge at the foot. And there is an ankle rocker at the foot as well. And then the toes have their own individual articulation. So really cool stuff here. Um, that's kind of neat that the toes have three separate points of articulation. And yeah, I mean, for a big guy, I, this moves a lot better than I ever would have imagined. Anyway, very cool figure. Thanks again to Axie Toys for including me in this. Remember, you can grab this at 5K Toys. And until next time, may the force be with you.